Why, hello there. Welcome to this Cancer full moon, boo. We have a big end today, a big end. We have a lot to talk about, so make sure you're comfy, grab a drink, grab a snack, and make sure you're chilling, boo, because we got a lot to get into. This Cancer full moon is not coming to play, okay? This full moon is coming with some deep revelations that we probably likely need in our lives right now. This full moon is coming with clarity and a lot of other unexpected but really deep, meaningful, sentimental, and emotional things, so stay tuned. As always, you want to watch the first part of this video before you go skipping to your sign because you will get a whole lot more from this if you do. And if you're new here, my name is Tani Michelle. We do astrology, tarot, spirituality, and all kinds of other cool shit over here, so if that is your vibe, make sure to subscribe before you leave. Okay, so let's talk about this full moon and Ken so darling. So first off, as always, what the F is a full moon? A full moon is when the moon is lit up in the sky. We can see her. She is whole. She is glowing. She has had her full glow up, okay? It is when the moon and the sun are at opposite ends. They are literally on opposite ends of the earth. They are across each other. And so this gives the moon, because the moon reflects the sun's light, her full glow e self. Generally speaking, because a full moon is bright and lights up and lights up the sky and lights up the shadows and the darkness at night, a full moon brings things to light for that reason. Around a full moon, we can sense a lot more. We can feel a lot more. The moon deals with our intuition, our instincts, our internal worlds, the deep emotional feelings that we go through and the moods that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. And so the moon is a very, very, very important part of our day-to-day -day and mundane lives. So when we have a full moon, it is literally bringing things to the surface. It is lighting up the darkness. It is showing us something in a certain area in our lives. And so this particular full moon is happening in the sign of Cancer, baby. And what is Cancer? Cancer is a feminine water sign, and Cancer is actually ruled by the moon. So the moon is at home here. So a full moon in Cancer is super, super powerful. You feel it. You know it's there. Emotions begin to rise. We begin to feel things that maybe we didn't before. Things come to the surface. Emotions come to the surface. Things are exposed, and we are very sensitive, intuitive, and we can feel things a lot more than we usually can with a Cancer full moon. So this Cancer full moon is reminding us about emotional intelligence. And why is that? That is because we have been in the hard, dry earth sign of Capricorn season in the middle of winter in the Northern Hemisphere, which means we've been all about our practical earthly material lives, getting very structured and grounded and doing the hard things that need to be done, getting the shit done that needs to be done, taking responsibility, taking accountability, growing up. We've been seeing where we've been slacking off, where we've been too caught up in distractions and things that really aren't getting us where we want to go, that aren't progressing us, that aren't you know, solidifying our goals or helping us be more productive, etc. So we've been really focused on the cold, hard, dry, earthy energy of Capricorn for the last couple weeks since the Capricorn new moon, which I did a separate video on if you want to go watch if you haven't seen it. And now the opposite sign of Capricorn is where we are having this full moon, and that is Cancer. Now, Cancer is very different from Capricorn because it is not as focused on the material, physical, 3D, earthly plane. It is more focused on the internal, emotional, sensitive, intuitive realms, right? It is more about what we can feel, our emotions, our emotional bonds, our familial bonds, our family, where we feel safe and secure. Whereas Capricorn more focuses on the physical things we need to do to solidify a foundation to feel safe and secure, right? Cancer is more about the internal needs of us, <laughs> our internal needs to feel safe and secure. And so with that being said, the moon in Cancer, this full moon in Cancer is lighting up a particular area of our lives to do with 
our emotional worlds, our internal worlds, where we need to feel safe, what our needs are. Have we been neglecting our needs? Are there certain feelings that we've been having that we've been kind of putting off or that have kind of been in the background or that we haven't been able to figure out all the way because we've been working or we've been, you know, focusing on our goals. We've been focusing on getting where we want to get in our physical lives. And so this Cancer Full Moon is bringing to light something that we need to realize or look at. And especially emotionally, especially with our internal worlds, with how we're feeling, and especially with our needs, our intuition, and possibly bonds that we have in our lives. This is even more of a bigger deal because we have the Mercury Sun Kazemi happening right around this full moon. What does that mean? Well, Mercury has been retrograding in Capricorn. So Mercury, we've already been like reflecting, like not only have we been feeling this urge, this push to go after our goals, to plant the seeds, to do the physical day-to-day like earthly material things that we need to do to progress and to get to where we want to go. Not only that, but we've also been reflecting on what we want to do, where we're going, our goals, how to be more productive in this area, how to reach our goals. We may have been feeling lost when it comes to how we're going to move forward with our goals, how we're going to move forward to success, how we're going to achieve what we want to achieve. So we've been really doing a lot of reflecting on what it is that we actually want to achieve where it is that we're actually going, what goals we actually need to set in place and how to go about reaching those goals and the path to getting there. So it's like as much as we've wanted to focus and get shit done uh, the Capricorn way, we've also been kind of like lost in the sauce. Like, wait a second, how do I do this? What's the next step? Like, I'm confused. I don't even know where I'm going. What's the end goal, right? Like, what is the top of the staircase? Like in my new moon and Capricorn video, I talked about the staircase and how Capricorn is, you know, focusing on the practical steps to get to where we want to go. But we may not even know where that is just yet, or we may not know the steps just yet. We may have not found the damn staircase just yet, you know? And so <laughs> with that being said, because Mercury's been retrograding, we haven't been able to move forward all the way. There's been something kind of like, Ugh. you know, we've been a little lost in the sauce. We, we haven't been able to fully develop a plan, develop a, a practical plan, practical steps for moving forward in some way, or we've just been reflecting on how we're going about achieving things, how we're going about our goals, what our goals even are, what success looks like to us how we want to achieve certain things, what needs to be done in our lives. Like we've been starting to see where certain things have been distracting us from the physical things that matter in our lives, whether that be our job, whether that be certain tasks, certain duties, whether that be, you know, our foundations, whatever it may be, we've been reflecting. So we haven't been able to move forward all the way. It's been feeling like we're actually maybe even going backward a little bit. Like, wait a second, it feels like no matter what I'm doing, I'm not quite getting there or something's not quite clicking. This Cancer Full Moon with this Mercury Kazemi is the click, okay? This is the first click where the Sun and Mercury align and we have this revelation of like, holy shit, this is the direction or this is what's been missing or this is where I've been confused and this Cancer Full Moon is making it even bigger it's it's like making it it's making it so seen like you can't you can't deny it you know like it it, you can't resist it like it's going to make it so obvious to us we're going to feel it we're going to like logically see it and mentally see it whether that comes in from an intuitive message a download um you know some kind of communication like we're talking to someone and something we realize something or it's just like a a, a simple shift of the mind or it comes through our dreams or it comes through some kind of realization or some kind of news that comes in you know whatever it is it's like something some kind of information is revealed on this full moon that we intuitively feel we get there almost by taking a step back and really listening to what our emotions are saying to what our feelings are saying to what our intuition is saying Right. And then from doing that, it's like we get the answers we've needed. Right. So this full moon is bringing answers. This full moon is bringing realizations, revelations for us to finally move forward to begin seeing the staircase 
to where we need to go, to begin truly starting to walk that staircase to see the steps clearly instead of feeling confused or feeling like we're not sure which direction we're going or we're not sure what's like going on with how we've been going about something like something's missing or something's not right or we've been rethinking so much that it feels strange to move full speed ahead forward right now if you've been feeling this way this cancer full moon is going to come in and reveal something that we feel that we see that we realize and that is going to help us move forward, okay? So on top of that, we also have this Cancer full moon in an aspect with the planet Uranus. So not only that, it also brings upgrades. It also brings kind of these, these really like higher insights with it or these unexpected or unpredictable insights with it. It's like we really get some unexpected information or some unexpected it's like whatever we're realizing is coming in through an unexpected way it could come in through our emotions our intuition like i said dreams downloads other people you know certain communications that we're having with other people you know um some kind of news some kind of, we're like listening to a youtube video or someone talk and it's like boom it just hits us it's like it hits us very quickly and out of nowhere and it feels almost like shocking, but it also feels freeing. It also feels freeing. It also feels liberating. Like Uranus is bringing in this liberation. It's like we're finally like connecting dots. Like we're finally like breaking free of old patterns, old ways of doing something that have been confused for so long, right? And we're finally reaching a place of feeling a little bit more stable and secure because of this news or this information, you know, like if you've, for some of you, this could be like, you know, you're not confused, but maybe you've been waiting on some kind of communication, or maybe you've been waiting on some kind of news to come in first, you know, before you can move forward. This Cancer full moon could very, very well bring that news, you know, it's going to be different for each sign. But this month in general, in January, is going to bring a lot of forward moving energy finally. So if you don't get it around this Cancer full moon on January 6th, then by mid-month, you will likely get it as Mars goes direct on the 12th. You know, Mercury will be going direct on the 18th. And so there will be a lot of things clicking into place. There will be a lot of things that finally begin to start making sense from here on out from this cancer full moon forward okay so but this cancer full moon is a huge start of it where we have that mercury sun kazemi and we really see what this mercury retrograde has been about like this is a time like halfway through mercury's retrograde period where we're like oh oh <laughs> this is what this has been about you know this is what's going on here like it, something is revealed to us that is what a full moon is it is a combination a peak moment where something is bright and something is revealed to us something is shown to us it's like we can see something clearly we can see our emotions clearly what's been going on in our internal world more clearly we can see things that usually are a little bit more dark or subconscious a lot more clearly so if we've been having some subconscious programming some internal shit that's been like blocking us like from moving forward and we've been questioning a lot of things like taking a step back and focusing on that internal world and focusing on your emotions for a little bit can really 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 help and bring a lot of clarity like that is really what this full moon is bringing like we're getting very clear on how we're feeling but we're also seeing where there are certain wounds, where there are certain insecurities holding us back because Chiron is going to be in a square with this full moon, okay? It's like a, it's a waning square, so it's already kind of, you know, it'll, we'll more so feel that on the build up to the full moon, but we're going to be seeing where certain internal insecurities have been holding us back, okay? Where certain internal insecurities old wounds, past wounds have been preventing us from moving forward, especially to do with our identity, our independence, our, you know, being more self-focused. So anything like that, like these wounds could definitely deal with. If we feel uh, like we need to prove ourselves in some way, or if we've been doing something that isn't totally aligned with who we are, that is going to get shown to us on this full moon so we can finally have clarity and then we can finally start 
having some kind of plan, some kind of practical plan for moving forward, okay? So that is my interpretation of this Cancer full moon. We are going to go ahead and get to the signs. Your rising sign will resonate most. So don't forget that. And uh, if you would like more from me, if you'd like to support me farther and learn astrology, see my Patreon down below. I have tons of different memberships, really affordable ones that you can sign up for to get exclusive content from me every month. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and we are going to get to the signs. Okay, Cancer, starting with you. This is a full moon in your sign. So full moon, full you, baby. <laughs> this is all about you. So with a full moon in your sign, Cancer, generally speaking, you're going to feel a lot more in tune with your senses, in tune with yourself, in tune with your intuition. This is usually a time when you go through a full moon in your sign where you are kind of shedding an old layer of yourself, where you are letting an old part of you go or an old version of yourself go and truly kind of getting back to yourself as well. So it could be that maybe you felt a little lost recently or you felt a little unlike yourself and now you're really getting back to yourself again. You're really getting back to who you are again and what's familiar to you as well. But it could also be that you are letting go of old parts of you, like I said before. So you could also be having a lot of revelations during this time, a lot of intuitive downloads, a lot of intuitive revelations, and your intuition could be speaking to you through your dreams, through your, like through certain nudges, through your body, through all kinds of different ways, honestly, like just wherever, basically you're, you know, everybody has a different kind of intuition or, you know, different psychic things that they pick up on, but this could be a very psychic time for you where you are kind of shedding the old and stepping into the new and you are having a lot of realizations and epiphanies about your relationships and your social life while also seeing where you may have insecurities or have been holding yourself back in terms of career and the world and your future and your goals, you know, because of maybe certain relationships or certain people in your life, you've been really seeing the kinds of relationships that you want to be in versus the kind of relationships that you may have been attracted to in the past, okay? So you've been really kind of looking for a like more stability more structure like more solidity within relationships okay with Capricorn in your seventh and all this Capricorn shit that we've had going on so this could definitely be a time where some information comes in some news comes out there's some communications to be had with some of the people in your life or some relationships in your life where you begin to have certain realizations or where certain things start clicking uh, in terms of you and your dynamics in relationships and what you actually want and desire and what your goals are in relationships and where you're going with your relationships in your life, right? So for you, we have the King of Swords here coming up. And then we also have the High Priestess of Air, a lot of air energy. Wow. Wow. I was not expecting that. So this definitely looks like you are... <laughs> Like, you are not fucking around, okay? Like, you, I really kind of get this King of Swords. Like, you are at a place where things are really clicking mentally for this full moon and where you kind of have to be a little bit more logical and less so, like, less superficial. Like, you have to be a little bit more logical and you have to really trust your instincts. You have to really trust whatever information this is coming in, it's almost like there's a truth that is coming in for you here, Cancer. Like there's a really massive truth coming in. And you know that it's also possibly revealed, like I said, through communication, information or conversation or some kind of realization that comes in here. And you're really getting clear about your social life. And it's like you've been kind of led to think a little bit less with your emotions. Um, and a little bit more with your intuition and also logic in general, right? Like if logic is telling you one thing, but your feelings like about maybe things that you're attached to are telling you another, then this is a time where you could be letting go of attachments. Basically, you could be cutting off certain attachments in your life. And I also feel like with the high priestess of air card, she does have a moon 
on her forehead. So I feel like there could be some things revealed here to you. And it's like you knew all along, but you didn't want to believe it. Like, that's the thing. That's kind of what I feel here. It's like you knew deep down. You knew all along, but you didn't want to believe it because you were trying to be nice or you were trying to, like, you know, just, like, stay attached to whatever this is. But this is kind of, like, the point where you're like, you know what? I have to do what I have to do for me. And I cannot believe I didn't trust myself. Like, this is a time where you're really seeing certain things about yourself, certain things, if you are Cancer rising, certain things about yourself, certain things that maybe you haven't trusted within yourself, certain feelings, certain nudges, certain intuitive hits. It's like, you know, this is a very intuitive, sensitive, and internal time. So this may be a time where you take some time for you and through that time things are revealed or something is revealed externally and then you're like, you know what, I knew this, right? Like this is a time of getting back to what's familiar to you while also realizing a lot in terms of your relationship. So let me know down below the T. I want to know the T, Cancer. Let me know what's going on in your life. Just please tell me it all down below and it would also help my video out and it's a great way to show that you appreciate this reading if this landed with you. Make sure to like this video send it to all of your friends all your girlies and your boys like whatever just send it to everybody <laughs> and if you would like more from me see the description below and we're gonna move on Alrighty, my fellow leo risings i'm so excited to talk to you right now because we have a lot to talk about okay as your fellow leo rising friend here on the internet like i am telling you that it has been rough up in this bitch okay as a leo rising we have been really confused and reflecting on a lot in terms of our work, our productivity. It's like things are changing so much in our work life, our day-to-day -day life, maybe your health. This could also be your health for some of you, you know, and there's been a lot of confusion here. It's like, how do we really go about the things that we need to go about to get to where we want to get to? And so there's been a lot of confusion here with our daily habits, our daily routines, and I know for me, just like just this week, I was finally like, you know what? Because it's it felt like I was constantly busy, but I was busy doing stuff that like, yeah, some of it was important, but a lot of it wasn't. <laughs> a lot of it wasn't. It wasn't like a priority, you know? And I realized that recently and I was like, you know, I haven't really been working as much and I really need to be working right now. Like, like I, there's a lot I need to be doing and I can't just keep like you know, putting it off or whatever, because I'm confused. Like I just need to just do it because I wasn't like, I've been confused. Like, okay, what video should I film? And I promise like, if you're Leo rising, maybe you can relate. That's why I'm saying this. I'm not trying to make your reading all about me here, but I'm just saying like, it's been confusing. You know, like I didn't know what videos to film. I've been kind of questioning everything. Like, should I just quit everything in general, get a new job, like get a, a normal job, you know, like, but I don't want that because I've worked for myself for a long time. And I feel like that's like what I'm meant to do. And I put so much into this and I do really love what I do there. Like, but I've just been really confused. And so basically, with this full moon in cancer, the reason that I'm saying this is that if you've been confused as well in your work life, with your job, with your day-to-day -day routines, with your health, with habits, if you've been noticing these things come up a little bit more than usual, or you've been feeling like you want to be productive, but there's like a lot of confusion or you can't quite grasp like what you're supposed to be doing, this cancer full moon's coming in for some of us to be like, okay, maybe we need to take a step back. We need to focus on us. We need to go within. We need to see how we really feel. Maybe we need to take a break. Maybe we need to take some time off. Maybe we need to rest, right? Like this is the 12th house. This is about getting out of our usual day-to-day -day routines, but it's a full moon. So it's also about exposing things that are going on behind the scenes, certain feelings, you know, certain intuitive downloads, you know, things could definitely be coming in through our sleep, through our dreams, our sleep schedules could really be affected lately with this full moon. And so this is a time of kind of pulling back for a second to really reflect and go within. But for some of us, this could also just be a revealing of things that are going on behind the scenes while also giving us some information or some realizations, some revelations in terms of what we need to be doing in terms of our job, in terms of our day-to-day -day life, in terms of our health, in terms of all the things I already said, because we're going to have the Mercury Kazemi in our sixth house, which is really going to like give us some answers, connect some dots, give us some revelation, something, you know, it's giving us something like something's finally clicking for a minute here, you know, like at the same time, this full moon is in aspect with Uranus, which is in our 10th house of our career, you know? So again, like 
This is giving us some downloads, some insights. It's showing us where we need to upgrade and up level in terms of our career or where we need to make some changes or where we've been reflecting on some changes in terms of our path and our career life. And then on top of that, it's also aspecting Chiron in our ninth house. So we're also seeing where we have some insecurities or wounds when it comes to learning, education, teaching, sharing our educational ideas with others, with the world, you know, leading leadership and things like that. So it's a big full moon for us. That's bringing a lot to light. So I also have a tarot card and an Oracle card here for you, Leo, because I just all of a sudden felt like getting back into tarot recently. Uh, this is the Ten of Cups. Wow. Wow. Okay. And then we also have the Strength card. Wow. Okay. Damn. So this Ten of Cups is like, it really shows that there could be like an ending or something fulfilling happening here with this Cancer full moon, where it's like we're finally getting to a place emotionally that feels normal, right, or good, or fulfilling. It's like we have been so focused on maybe the physical, right? The physical, finances, our job, our work, our career, our bodies, our health, whatever. But this Cancer full moon's coming in to say like, okay, don't forget to also like make sure that you're emotionally fulfilled. Like what's gonna emotionally fulfill you? Is that gonna be spending time with family? Is that gonna be spending time with people that you love? Is that gonna be like, you know, doing things that bring you pleasure, joy, and internal fulfillment that really truly bring you a sense of love and internal emotional fulfillment in your life, right? Not just physical fulfillment. And this Cancer full moon's coming in to like help with that and balance that out so we can finally end something and let something go. And another thing with the 12th in our sixth house, Leo, is that this could also very much be about like breaking and ending old habits in our lives. So watch out for that too. Like where do we have self undoing habits, self destructive habits that are actually keeping us from being emotionally fulfilled? This Cancer full moon is exposing a lot, okay? It's exposing a lot that's been going on behind the scenes or subconsciously for us where we need to heal, where we need to let go, where we need to surrender, where we need to rest, you know? This could bring up the topic of family or things that are going on kind of behind the scenes or can make us feel like we want to be a little bit more secluded so we can focus on something more intensely. We also have the strength card. Okay, and I don't know why I just felt like this. For some of you, if you are D, I know this is like a really random specific message, but I felt called to share it just now. Some of you, if you're dealing with a family situation, where you are worried about a family member for some reason, maybe they're in the hospital, which can be very 12th house, uh, maybe they're not doing well, something like this. Um, with the strength card, I really feel like something's going to pull through there. So that's a random message for, for someone, okay? But I also feel like with this strength card, it's like, hold on, like, remember who the fuck you are, Leo. Like the strength card is literally us in the tarot, but this is an Oracle card, but still like, what you built and who you are is not going to break that easily, right? Like this is about our roots. Like we have strong fucking roots. Like we've been through a lot. Don't forget what you've been through. Don't forget your past. Like remember who the fuck you are, okay? You are not built from plastic, okay? You're not gonna break that easily and you're gonna get through this, right? And like, yes, you can want a strong foundation, but also remember that it's okay to be emotionally fulfilled too. And so this may show us like limiting belief systems that we have in terms of those things as well. So let me know down below, Leo, if that resonates. Okay, let your girl know. Let me know all the tea. What's going on with you guys? Can you relate? If you're Leo rising, are you feeling any of these things that I named off? Like, are you in the same boat as me? Or like, what's up? Let your girl know. Send this to your friends. Okay, they want to see it. And uh, yeah, I love you. If you want anything else from me, personal readings, if you want to join my Patreon and support me and all of that, see the links below. And we're going to move on to the next sign. Hello, Virgo. Welcome to your Cancer full moon reading or horoscope for this full moon. So for you, my Virgo darlings, 
this full moon is happening in your 11th sector. So social, 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 busy, busy, busy. Somebody is going to feel a little bit like a social butterfly. <laughs> so this could definitely be a time where you start hearing from different people from your past, different acquaintances. You start remembering different things from your past to do with different people. This is a time where you've been really focused on your passions and what you love, possibly dating, romance, your love life in general, children the last few weeks. But with this full moon, it's taking you outward a little bit more. It's like, okay, like what about the things that you want to do in the world? What can you do with those passions? What about the people that you know, the connections that you have? So this full moon could be really taking you back, like really just bringing in a lot of different like memories of different people or exposing something to you in terms of your social life or your love life. You could start realizing different things about your love life or about your heart. You know, this really has to do with your heart. Like, where is your heart? What is your truth? You know, this could be a time where you're getting vulnerable with other people or other people are getting vulnerable for you with you. Like you, maybe other people are like kind of like relying on you, like you're a therapist or, you know, something like this. Where And where you could also find where you have like a lot of different insights to share. Like there's a lot of different insights that you're having, a lot of different realizations and revelations that you're having. And on top of that, you could really see a lot in terms of where you felt insecure in terms of your finances, in terms of building wealth, in terms of, you know, kind of financial obligations and, you know, any kind of shared resources or finances. So Let's go ahead and get some cards for you, Virgo. Ooh, okay. So we have the Knight of Coins here and we have the card of Chaos. So I feel like this full moon's really bringing in, I want to say, Virgo, that it's bringing in a sense of like where maybe you never felt stable as a child and where you also like have had issues providing that stability with yourself and certain limiting beliefs that you have around stability, finances, wealth, feeling secure, and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. I feel like this full moon is really, and I could be totally off with this, okay? So just what I'm intuitively picking up, but like, I feel like this full moon is really exposing certain walls that you may have up and how you may be somewhat even like, it's almost like self-fulfilling prophecies is what I'm getting here. Like, how are you caught in like a cycle that you keep maybe bringing on yourself? Or how are you possibly resisting change because you're because of fear, right? Is there something in your life that needs to be cleaned up that you're resisting, you know, because you're you're trying to it's almost like you're you're trying to stay where you're at because it's comfortable because you're scared of stirring up some kind of chaos but where you're at is no longer comfortable so it's like what are you going to do about it you know it's like there's some changes that are happening and you're really realizing some things that are holding you back in terms of your insecurities and in terms of resources possibly uh especially to do with children or certain limiting beliefs that you've had since you were a child so Definitely kind of a different reading than I was expecting with your astrology, but let me know down below if that resonates Virgo. I would really love to hear your feedback and send this to people that you know because they want to see it too. And if you want more from me, see the links in the description and we're going to move on to the next sign. Alrighty, Libra Risings, this full moon in Cancer is happening in your 10th house of your career, your public image, your goals, your reputation, your future, your past in life so this is this is a full moon that's really highlighting this area of your life it's really exposing something here you're really realizing something here or it's bringing like a an intense focus here for some reason or another it could be really pushing you to be more vulnerable to show your vulnerability is more or to it could be also showing you something that you've been feeling intuitively in terms of your career in terms of your future in terms of your path in terms of your goals as well. So these are going to, this is going to be the big focus for you this full moon, but it's also going to be about you kind of realizing some things in terms of home, family, and your internal life, your internal foundation. And also, you know, some insights or upgrades that happen simultaneously with your 
finances, investments, business, debts, things like this, any kind of financial situations could be brought up with this full moon as well. But it's like giving you insights or showing you or something, you know, like showing you something about something you've been maybe trying to change or upgrade in this area. Now, it could also be showing you where that you have some insecurities or some wounds in terms of relationships and where that's kind of held you back, maybe in your life with your goals, with what you want to do in terms of your home life, your personal life, your family, and where you may need to face some of those wounds, okay? So with that being said, we are going to <clears throat> draw some cards for you here. Okay, so we have the moon card reversed. Wow, okay. And then we also have the card rigid. Okay, so <laughs> this really goes perfectly with this full moon. So I see here, Libra, that this full moon for you, it's like you have been maybe neglecting your emotions or not listening to your intuition. I also feel like you have been maybe hiding who you really are or something very vulnerable about yourself. And so it's almost like something private is getting revealed on like a bigger scale. Um, it's like something that you have maybe tried to repress or deny or not look at. It's like something is coming up from the shadows big time here, but you haven't wanted to feel it. You haven't wanted to acknowledge it. You haven't wanted to embrace it. And so that's why we have this rigid card. It's like, you are maybe scared to like let your walls down or you're scared to allow yourself to soften. And so with this full moon, like try to allow yourself to soften, try to like kind of see what's really going on here because that's how you're going to get answers. That's how you're going to be able to, to move forward. It's like something's trying to come up, but it's being blocked by maybe you not wanting to feel it or not wanting to accept it or not wanting to soften your edges a little bit. And so, or you're scared that other people are not going to be accepting of it. And it's like, what really matters is that you get it off your chest, that you let it out, that you allow yourself to feel it, right? This could also be a time where you are like seeing through delusion or illusion. It's like, maybe there's been a time, like maybe there are certain lies that you're finally seeing through or certain truths that are finally coming out. So that's something else that I see for you, Libra. Let me know down below if that resonates. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear all the tea on what's going on with you. And uh, make sure to send this to your friends, to your family, all of that. If you would like more from me, see the links down below and we're going to move on. Alrighty, Scorpio Risings. This full moon for you is happening in a place that is very much about your belief systems, your worldviews, how you see the world and kind of where you feel a sense of faith, meaning, and purpose in life. This can deal also with higher education, travels, things like this. So this could definitely be a time where things are coming to light in this area, where you're seeing a bigger picture and there are certain truths that are unveiled, right? There are certain intuitive truths that are unveiled. There are certain things that you begin to see about where you're at versus where you want to go or what you think you know versus what you don't, you know, there are things being revealed in terms of your faith, your beliefs, your worldviews, your views on life, religion, politics, things like this. So this could definitely be a time where you are noticing these things or where there are certain intuitive nudges or emotional responses, you know, to do with these things, to do with your opinions, your beliefs, etc. So with that being said, this could also somehow tie into your relationships with other people, your partnerships, you know, certain committed, close relationships that you have in your life, et cetera, because it is aspecting Uranus in your seventh. So this could be a time where, you know, you've been really reflecting on your day-to-day -day life and somehow that's been tying into your relationships or your partner or other people in your life. Now, also, this is squaring Chiron in your sixth house. So this could also be a time where you are really seeing where you've had certain wounds or have been feeling insecure or triggered in your work, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, you know, where you uh, have been having certain triggers around these things or insecurities around these things. And this could be getting brought up for you to see, you know, for you to get vulnerable with yourself or get vulnerable with others to get to really express yourself on like a larger scale 
and see, you know, like lean into your faith or, you know, remember certain things that, you know, like certain things that give you a sense of meaning, purpose, faith, etc. So let me know if that's correct so far. We're going to look at your cards because I decided to pull cards. So, oh, we have the Ten of Swords here, Scorpio, and we also have Focus. Okay. So you may have been feeling very distracted recently. Um, if you're a Scorpio rising, you may have been feeling very distracted and kind of like mentally exhausted. Like you've had a lot going on or like you have been like you have been so focused on something to where it's become almost like obsessive or it's become like, you know, like it's caused you issues where like mentally you've been like not feeling like yourself, you know, because this Mercury retrograde is happening in your third house. And so this could have been a time where it's been very difficult you difficult for you to like focus on the goals and the things that you want to focus on because you've had so many other things going on or you've had to deal with other people or take care of other people. And so I feel like this full moon is showing you, it's kind of like a culmination point that's showing you that something something that's been weighing you down for a while, something that has been like a self-fulfilling prophecy or something that has been like keeping you down in terms of your mindset for a while, okay? And so it's kind of like a time where I feel like it's exposing certain things so you can get back to like really, really focusing on yourself, on what you love, where you're going in life, you know? And so I feel like this Mercury retrograde may have been a lot about for you so far where your focus is. This full moon could also be bringing in certain communication, certain news, certain information, certain things, certain things are going to be revealed to you for this full moon that are going to help you really focus your energy in one place. And, you know, it may have felt difficult to do that because maybe you've been feeling exhausted. Uh, but I feel like after this full moon passes, there's going to be like a cleansing. Okay, there's going to be like a cleansing and you're going to be able to focus your energy a lot easier. So let me know down below if any of that resonates, Scorpio. I'd love to hear your feedback and what you have to say about it. As always, tell me all the tea. I want to know. Let me know down below. Send this to your friends. Okay. They want to see it and uh, make sure that you check out my links down below if you are interested in more from me. And with that being said, we're going to move on to the next sign. Sagittarius, darling, let's get into it. So this Cancer full moon for you is happening in your eighth house. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I mean, it could be a little bit. You never know. But this full moon in your eighth house in Cancer is very much about your bonds and your connections, especially with any familial bonds, deep bonds or connections and intuitive insights in terms of your finances, your investments, your business, you know, business deals, shared finances, your partner's money, loans, resources, debt, any money that's owed to you or money that you owe to other people. So this could be a time where you are really reflecting on these things. You are really remembering these things. These things are coming into focus at this time because you've been so, so focused on your own priorities, your own values, your own income, your own money, your own streams of revenue and resources. And so this Cancer full moon is like, okay, well, this could be an ending or something being exposed to you on the other side of the coin here where it's like, oh, well, maybe there's more or maybe there's something I owe or maybe there's something someone owes to you. Maybe there's certain information. You know, you've been really, really reflecting on your finances the last couple of weeks and wanting to get structured there. But it's like, how do you feel about your long-term finances, about building wealth, about your connections, your financial connections with others, right? These are topics that are coming in hot for you at this full moon. Now, on top of that, Sagittarius, this full moon is going to be aspecting Uranus in your sixth house of your work, your job, your day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day health, the tasks that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and your habits. So this could be a time where you've been really wanting to upgrade your habits and revolutionize your work and your day-to-day -day life and have more freedom here. And so somehow this full moon could be giving you some insight into that, giving you some truth, giving you like, or you find some new information that, you know, you've been reflecting on different things. And so there's like some information that comes in that helps you make certain connections in terms of prioritizing your finances and your resources. And also this full moon is going to be aspecting Chiron, which is in your fifth house of children, love, romance, dating, 
matters of the heart. So this could also be a time where this full moon is maybe exposing some insecurities, wounds, or issues here that need to be addressed, some triggers here that somehow play into all this. So let me know if any of that lands with you. And I'm going to look at your cards really quick. Ooh, okay. So we have the page of coins and we have the card denial. So this <laughs> could definitely be a time where you are, again, like you're learning a lot in terms of your resources, your money, your finances, but with the moon in your eighth house, it's like, it could be a time of asking for help or de like, you know, dependency in some way, either from other people to you or from you to other people on other people, you know? And so, but you could be kind of like in denial about that in some way, Sag, um, if you're Sag rising. So this could be a time that is like trying to teach you certain things about asking for help or relying on others or depending on others. Now it could be different for different ones of you. For some of you, it could be that you are too dependent on some kind of outside source, whether it be a person, you know, institution, whatever, for your needs. And that is something you've been reflecting on. And you are beginning to realize that it's time to deny that or someone has been too dependent on you and you're at this place where you're like, okay, I need to worry about me. I can't keep worrying about them. So it's time to like, you know, pull away from that. Or this could be a play, uh, a situation where you are in denial about allowing other people to help you because this is the page of coins. So it's telling me that you may not have it all figured out, right? Like you're still learning about something. There's You're still in the learning process of this and that's okay, okay? And so if there is some help that tries to come in, um, maybe you don't need to deny it. Like, yes, you can be self-sufficient and achieve things on your own with Capricorn in your second, but Cancer in your eighth is like, hey, like you can also rely on people that you have strong bonds with or good connections with too um, that are reliable. You know, like, especially like, and, and this wouldn't be something that you do out of the blue that's brand new. It is a Mercury retrograde, but this could be something like an offer coming back from the past or, you know, something coming back around that you don't have to deny yourself of, you know, for some of you, that could be the lesson though. So it just depends on your situation. So let me know down below what it is for you. What the, what's the tea? I really want to know. I would love to know where you're at with this full moon Sag. So don't forget to comment down below, send this to your girlies and your boys and just whoever. I would really, really appreciate it. Check the links down below if you would like more from me and we are going to move on to the next sign. Capricorn babes. This is your cancer full moon horoscope. So what we have here for you, Capricorn, is this full moon is happening in your seventh house of other mother effing people, your relationships, okay? The people that you are in close committed relationships with, that you have commitments with, contracts with, agreements with, marriage partners, or someone that you've been dating for a long time, like just other people in your life that you have close contact with, right? So this full moon is highlighting your relationship sector. So this could be a time where something is seen, where you finally kind of start seeing something in terms of a relationship or where something is, becomes like a focus in terms of your relationships, your relationship dynamics, or where there's like a culmination point, letting go or ending that is happening here in terms of relationships in your life. Well, you are also realizing a lot of different things about yourself that you've already been reflecting on for the last couple weeks since we've been in your sign. So Mercury has been retrograding in your sign. So you've been really doing a lot of reflecting and soul searching on yourself and who you are and how you show up and your appearance and your identity and like how you come across and, you know, your character traits, etc. while also really, you know, letting go and, um, you know, seeing certain things in terms of your relationship. So this could be a time where there is like heightened emotion, heightened sensitivity, heightened intuition in terms of your relationships or the people around you, like either they're feeling it or you're feeling it, like one of the two. And you're also really getting like, like things are starting to really click about this Mercury retrograde in terms of your identity, in terms of other people and who you are and how you want to go about, you know, yourself like this is like a new version of you that's like forming here and you're getting a lot of time to like really 
be strategical with this, to like really get detailed with this, with this Mercury retrograde in your first house. Now, on top of that, this could also bring in uh, some insecurities, triggers, or wounds in terms of your family life, your personal life, your home life, your living situation, your past, because it's going to be squaring Chiron in your fourth house. So it could bring up some things there where you're like, ooh, you know, I'm finally kind of seeing this, or I see where I've been kind of triggered here, where I see where I've been kind of insecure here, etc. But it's also going to be positively aspecting Uranus in your fifth house of children, romance, dating, and matters of the heart. So this could also be a time where you're like finally seeing something or having unexpected insights or changes here in terms of those things as well. So let me know down below if you're seeing those things. And I'm going to look at your cards here. Ooh, so we have the three of wands reversed and we have choices. Wow. Okay. So take your time with big decisions right now. Mercury is retrograding in your sign, which is this three of wands reverse. Like you've been really taking your time. You've been really reflecting. You've been really like before you make a big move, before you can see where you're going, before you see the vision, you've been kind of reflecting. So it has probably felt like you, like you want to move forward. Like you're like, you want to start setting your goals and doing your thing and all of that but it's like you haven't been quite able to because you've been reflecting so much on yourself in the past and maybe your childhood and all of that and how all that plays into your relationships you know and so you kind of may feel like a little bit of a standstill right now or a little bit of like a slowdown period right now uh and so <laughs> you've been like, oh, I don't know what to do. Like I have all these different choices or I have all these different options and I'm not sure which one to choose. Right. And so I feel like this is really saying that you do have choices if you don't think you do. And then if you do know that you do have choices, then, you know, just take a little bit longer, right? Like wait till this Mercury retrograde is over to start making big decisions. This Cancer full moon could really bring something to light for you that helps you start seeing more clearly but it's still not the time to go full speed ahead just yet like it's still like you still want to kind of take your time and don't do anything impulsively like you likely already have been doing you know like you've likely already been kind of reconsidering things slowing down and like really looking at like what's your vision for where you're going before you go there right and it's like it's okay that you're not clear basically right now if you're not and there will be other options there will be other choices and you will cross that bridge when it comes which will start happening very quickly after this cancer full moon so let me know down below if that re resonated with you capricorn i would really love to hear your feedback and what's going on with you make sure to send this to your friends they would love to see it and check the description below if you would like more from me and we're going to move on to the next one Alrighty, aquarius risings with this full moon in cancer you have been kind of behind the scenes reflecting the last few weeks on how to kind of restructure your life from the inside out, right? How to do things behind the scenes that help you like, you know, subconscious patterns, subconscious habits, things like that. What are your habits and how are those playing into your day-to-day -day life, your work life? And are you taking care of yourself? Are you really doing the things that need to be done? even instead of putting them off, you know? And so with this Cancer full moon, this is really exposing something in terms of your work, your day-to-day -day routines, your habits, your health, and possibly even coworkers, employees, tasks, you know, things like that. So this is really bringing something to light. It's kind of showing you, you know, what needs to be felt, let go of, surrendered to, embraced, or where you need to be vulnerable, or where you need to let certain things go in terms of old habits where certain things may need to end, right? Like where it's time to restructure your life from the inside out and how to let certain things go in your day-to-day -day routines, in your day-to-day -day life, in your work life that are just not aligned with you anymore. So this could be a time where you're really feeling a lot more sensitive, vulnerable, intuitive, or emotional, or where other people like in your work environment or feeling that way in terms of your work, your habits, your productivity, you know, the task that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis, your health, things like that. It's like you're really focused here right now with this Cancer full moon. Now, 
With that, it's going to be aspecting Uranus, your family, home life, your personal life, your private life, your living situation. And then it's also going to be a squaring Chiron, sorry, I like couldn't find it there for a second, in your third house of expressing yourself, communication, you know, like things like this. So this could definitely be a time where you are noticing certain triggers with your mindset, with opinions, with your environment, with the people that you're around. It's like you're changing the way that you're taking care of yourself. You're changing the way that you subconsciously and physically have your life structured so you can show up in a new way in your life, okay? Because after Capricorn season is your season, boo. So this is a time of letting go of a lot. This is a time of endings. This is a time of restructuring things from the inside out. Because then once we get to your season, you're going to be like a whole new you, right? So let me know if that relates down below. Let's go ahead and see what cards you got. Ooh, okay. So we have the tower card. And we have beauty. This is actually like really beautiful. If you are going through a moment where things feel a little unpredictable, a little unstable, if things feel a little chaotic, or if things feel like they're kind of breaking down in your life or ending in your life, then I think like it's time to find the beauty in this, right? It's time to like find the beauty even in the things that usually you like are like usually you have difficulty finding beauty in and you have Venus going through your sign right now too. So this does make perfect sense. It's like you're seeing the beauty in everything in all areas of life. And, and if you're not, then start looking for the beauty in the small things and the big things, you know, in polarity, right? In the, in the arena of transformation and change, like find the beauty in that and think about how more simplistic your life is going to be because of that right? Like you're an Aquarius rising, you thrive off of differences, right? So find the beauty in the differences of life, okay? And I feel like this is going to really help you. It's like you're letting out a lot, you're purging a lot, you're purging a lot that's like, like, and you're fixing what's not structured in your life so you can be more structured, right? Behind the scenes that like, it's like usually things that you may ignore, usually things that you know, but they end up going against you. And so it's like, you have to restructure these things if you want beauty in your life, right? And so that is what I'm getting for you, Aquarius. Let me know down below how you are feeling. If this resonated, I would love to know what's going on in your life right now. So please comment down below and let me know. Send this to your girlies, send this to your guys, whatever. <laughs> See the description down below if you would like more from me, and we are going to move on to the next time. Alrighty, Pisces Risings, this full moon is happening in your fifth house of your heart, matters of the heart, love, romance, your passions, children, fertility, sexuality, dating, all of these things, like where you have fun, where you play, where you have a good time. It's like, this is a full moon that could really reconnect you to your heart space, your feeling space, like what really feels good to you? What feels aligned with your heart? What are you really passionate about, right? This could bring up children and motherhood and things like that too as well. So that could be a focus around this time. This could also bring up dating and romance. This could be a time where it's like, you want to get back to some of these things because maybe you've been very focused externally on like the world or social groups, audiences, you know, different clicks that you belong to, maybe marketing or networking in some way. It's like you've been focused on where you fit in in the world and where you're going in the world and where you fit in with society. But this full moon is like, well, wait, what does your heart feel? You know, like, how do you feel inside with your heart? Like, what about romance? What about love? What about play? Right? Like, so this could really bring up sensitive matters of the heart, you know, intuitive matters of the heart. You could also be really realizing and having a lot of revelations in terms of your connections, your goals, your aspirations, the people that like like-minded people that are around you, you know, different groups of people that are in your life as well. So those could be something else that you see come up here. Now with that, we also have this full moon aspect in Uranus which is in your third house of how you express yourself, your day-to-day -day environments and things like this. So this could be a time where you, this brings in some changes here where you feel the need to express yourself in like a new unique way or change the way you've been going about expressing yourself. Maybe you feel the need to 
break free with something in your environment or you know go about something in a unique and different way now we also have this full moon squaring chiron in your second so this could also bring up some insecurities or wounds to do with your finances to do with resources or triggers with these things as well to do with your needs to do with your priorities so that could be something that you notice that comes up around this full moon too but all in all it's in your fifth house so i feel like this is going to be a really great time for getting comfortable again remembering what you love remembering where your heart is okay so we have the queen of swords coming up here for you pisces and then we have the success card so i feel like you've been really future focused is what i want to say you've been really future focused you've been really focused on like you know getting very clear mentally about what needs to be done where you need to go this could be like a lot of information come in or some some kind of news come coming in that like some kind of news or information that you've been waiting for that's like finally coming in and i also feel like you know you are really in this like mind frame or this like energy of like success and like achievement and like so I feel like you're gonna have like a lot of information or revelations or news coming in to do with something that's going to bring you success so if there's been something that you've been really trying for that you've been really focused on I feel like it's it's coming like there's definitely something that something that happens here that's very very successful for you Pisces so hopefully that is some good news for you let me know down below if that resonates I'd love to hear your feedback Pisces as always make sure to send this to all your peeps because they would love to see it too and with that being said let me know um well not let me know but <laughs> see the description below if you would like more from me and we're gonna move on to the next side Alrighty, Aries this full moon in cancer is happening in your fourth house of home family your personal life your foundation where you feel safe and comfortable your familial bonds your past your childhood like growing up like your roots, right? So these are some of the really deep, emotional, sensitive, um, you know, memories that could be coming up for you around this time or themes that could be coming up for you around this time where you start noticing a lot going on with family or a focus towards family or a focus towards where you come from, a focus towards your past, you know, your living situation, your home life, your internal world, your private life, your personal world, your emotional world as well so this is going to be very big for this time for you as an aries rising but this pull inward is also exposing something you're realizing something you're seeing something here but it's also giving you a lot of realizations and revelations in terms of your career path your future where you're headed in life your goals your achievements you know like literally your path in life and what you've been aiming to achieve it's like you've been doing a lot of reflecting on this You've been doing a lot of like going back and and really looking like re-looking at things and this like full moon is bringing a sense of perspective here finally it's like bringing some answers with it it's bringing some insight with it like some clarity with it where it's like oh i get this now i see you know like whatever you've been trying to figure out in terms of career it's like becoming more clear by this full moon and then also this full moon is going to be aspecting Uranus in your second house. So this could bring up some changes that you've been reflecting on in terms of finances, resources, money, income, etc. And this full moon is going to be squaring Chiron in your sign, Aries. So this could this full moon could also bring up certain insecurities or triggers or wounds with you and your identity and you kind of facing these things or maybe like needing to get vulnerable or needing to feel something let something go from the past for you to be able to move forward in your life and in your career and with your goals so let's see what cards you have so we have the page of swords here and we also have fulfillment here so it definitely looks like there's some information communication news something like that that's really coming in here for you Aries it's like something's happening here that really is shifting your focus shifting your state of mind shifting the way you've been thinking about something some kind of epiphany or realization is coming in here and I feel like that is going to lead to your fulfillment that is going to lead you to a sense of feeling more whole more complete more able to like more aligned like more of a feeling of alignment and i do feel like it has something to do with your resources possibly or again like your just your general sense of security right so if there's been something that's confused here or 
that's kind of that you've been kind of reflecting on I feel like you're figuring it out it's like you're figuring out your whatever the situation is your resources your security your foundation your finances maybe uh, a family situation <clears throat> as well is getting figured out here so let me know down below Aries if this resonates with you at all I would really love to hear your feedback as always, let me know the tea down below. And with that being said, we are going to move on to the next sign. Alrighty, Taurus rising. This Cancer full moon is happening in your third house. So this is going to be a time where you see some things coming up of your environment. What environments are you surrounding yourself with? What needs to change here, be let go here, or does something need to be realized here? Is something coming up from the surface here in terms of your day-to-day -day environments, your day-to-day -day duties, your day-to-day -day tasks, how you express yourself, your opinions, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, the places that you frequent, the people, energy, and things that you're around on a day-to-day -day basis, those kinds of things are really coming up here. This full moon is really exposing or bringing something to light here. This could be your bonds on a day-to-day -day basis in your environments or, you know, your past or certain memories or sentimental things, like things that you have certain connections to in your day-to-day -day environments or day-to-day uh, -to -day tasks or, again, the people, places, or things that you frequent. Siblings, cousins, relatives could also be something that you see coming up here, a focus that you see coming up here. Now, you're also realizing something pretty big in terms of your higher perspectives, your faith, your belief systems, your worldviews, travel, education, and things like that. It's like there's some kind of realization or revelation that is really hitting you with this Cancer full moon in terms of, you know, your day-to-day -day environment, your day-to-day -day reality versus what you believe long-term, what you, like your higher vision, your higher perspective, like your belief systems, like where you're going in life, right? Like all of these big things, like big questions and things like that could be also something you've been reflecting on lately. But this is a time where there's new insight that comes in or there's certain clarity or epiphanies that hit you with this full moon that really help you figure this out. So on top of this, we are going to have this full moon trining and sextiling Uranus in your sign. So this full moon is definitely bringing an energy that's going to make you feel that Uranian energy of like being revitalized, liberated, freeing. It's going to bring in something to do with your identity, something to do with yourself. It's like you're realizing something about yourself here or you are whatever this full moon brings up. It's like it gives you a sense of freedom or it helps you upgrade or up level in some way or change something that you've been reflecting on about yourself. But it also is going to be squaring Chiron in your 12th. So it could also bring in some subconscious triggers or something that needs to be healed, okay, that's been kind of going on behind the scenes or from your past or something like that. So let's see the cards that we have here for you. Oh, wow. Look at that. We have the Ten of Pentacles here for you, Taurus. We also have the Movement card in this deck. So it looks like you definitely are making some big moves um, or going to in the near future. It looks like you've been definitely working on success and making big moves and like, you know, possibly travel or doing something big. I really feel like here or working on bigger long term goals that you have, you know, especially financially, physically and materially. And, you know, maybe you've been really focusing on like, oh, I'm going to have to travel to do that or there's some kind of short trip you're going to have to go on or you're going to have to, you know, educate yourself more in some way. And so, again, like this is kind of tying somewhat into your astrology here. So, yeah, that's kind of what I see here. You're really focused on the success and the long term and the goals but, you know, you're also maybe considering um, having to make different moves or actually physically move in some way or travel in some way. So that is what I'm seeing here for you, Taurus. Let me know down below if any of that was accurate or resonated. I'd love to hear your feedback and we're going to move on to the next time. Alrighty, Gemini Risings, last but not least, this Cancer full moon is happening in your second house of your money, income, resources, and your needs. But this isn't just your physical needs. This is your emotional needs, your priorities, your internal needs, right? Where you feel safe, where you feel secure. So this could definitely be a full moon that's really bringing up those themes of safety, security, your needs. 
because you've been really focused on finances and you've been really focused on shared finances, shared resources, maybe money that you get from other people or money that you owe to other people or, you know, money you get from services, business, institutions, you know, things like this with your eighth house being very prevalent the last couple weeks and you're trying to like reflect on these things and restructure these things. But, you know, the full moon in your second house is like, well, hold on a second. What do you need? What do you need emotionally? Like, what do you need internally? Like, what is important to you internally? Like, what matters to you internally? So this could be a time where you are maybe letting go of things you've been attached to, or this could be a time where you're realizing certain things you've been attached to, or where you're realizing, you know, where you need to take care of your, your own needs in some way right now. Okay, so that could definitely be something that's coming up for you, Gemini Risings. Now, also, this full moon is going to be in an aspect with Uranus in your 12th house. So this could be an energy of like breaking free from something or something unexpected coming or, you know, something unpredictable that's coming up or really up leveling in some way. But this is also going to square uh, Chiron and Aries in your uh, 11th house of your social life, your friends, groups, different groups of people, audiences, marketing, um, you know, networking, things like that. So this could definitely be a time where you notice some triggers or old wounds coming up there as well that are revealed to you that maybe help you to work. Like maybe this full moon, it helps you to kind of work through. So your cards here, Gemini, we have the King of Swords and we have the Oracle card trapped here. So I feel like <clears throat> part of your issue, you know, like with this full moon, like you're realizing where you... You're, you're realizing something with your finances. You're realizing something. You're realizing maybe where you have certain attachments that keep you trapped. And with this King of Swords here, I feel like you're really cutting off. You know, it's like you're cutting off certain attachments because you realize they're keeping you trapped in this cage or they're keeping you, they're like holding you back in some way, right? Like, and so it's like for this full moon or even over the last couple of weeks, like you've really noticed like, holy shit, like, you know, these different things that I'm doing are keeping me trapped in certain situations and they could be financial or they could be something else. Like this could be referring to something else going on in your life or, you know, whatever these certain habits I have, these certain attachments I have, like whatever it is, it's like, it's starting to feel like they're no longer keeping you safe. It's like they're keeping you trapped. And so this King of Swords is like, am I in this cage because of safety or am I in this cage because <laughs> like I'm like I actually wouldn't be here, right? Like if it's, if I'm just in here for safety, then at some point, when does that safety turn into a trap, right? And that's kind of what I see here. So with the King of Swords, I feel like you could be really having a big realization around where you're feeling kind of stuck in your life in some of these areas and how to go about kind of cutting them out, right? So that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. Hopefully this resonates. Let your girl know down below if it does. And make sure to see my description if you would like more from me. And with that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.